I was mentally and emotionally in a lot of pain. That's, that's what I had convinced myself the problem was. I worked there for 30 days. They fired me. Let's talk about 2018. On December 15th, 2018, at 6 o'clock in the morning, I got a phone call that said that my mom was gone. I was the first to find out, and I was responsible for telling my dad and my aunt, which was my mom's only sister. So I was I was devastated. I, I told I told him that she was gone. The night before she passed, I called and they, they put the phone up to her ear for me and I I told her, if you wanna go, you can go. If you're tired, I understand. I'll be fine. So I will figure it out. You can go. So she went. So I lost my, my best friend 2018 in September. I lost my mom 2018 December. 10 days before Christmas. Now I ended up not being able to leave. Now my friend Ashley had to send me money to even get there to be, be to be home. So I I did leave. I left um actually I left on the 13th. Something like that, the 13th. And I, I wasn't able to come back until, I think, like the day before the funeral. Because I didn't have no no money. I didn't have no job. Actually sent me some money for me to get home to put gas in my car to go be there. And I, I couldn't leave um, once I got there. I still didn't have no job. People still hadn't said in this about this little orientation situation. So, while I was there, Christmas morning, I told you my mom only had one sister. And she, that sister only had one daughter. Christmas morning, she passed away. So my first cousin, my first first cousin, like my oldest first cousin, um, passed away on Christmas morning. Real rough, baby, real rough. So, you know, they try to get the funds together to be able to have her ceremony and everything. We couldn't do that until I think January. If I'm not if I'm not mistaken. She died on Christmas. We couldn't do nothing until January, so I couldn't leave. Um I, I was just I couldn't run. Is what I mean. When I said I couldn't leave, it's not that I wanted to leave my family, but I mean I I wasn't in a position with, uh, a position to run away from how I felt. I was I couldn't hide. You know, I had to be there and be vulnerable. I knew someone went right. So I was, I was sad. I was devastated. I was upset because I couldn't, uh, I couldn't run. I couldn't go nowhere. I, I, everything just seemed bad. People dying. People, like my mom was gone. Like I ain't got no mama. You know what I'm saying? I don't have a mama. I ain't got no job. Nothing. Like I just, I'm just out here. That's how I feel. I just feel out here. I left my daddy um, in our house for six months by himself. Um, it became a big situation while she was in the hospital. Um, when my mom was in the hospital, my dad stayed at the hospital and I, I ended up going to our house. And for the first time, at, at the time, 24 years, first time in my life, I was at home alone at night. I slept at our house for the first time in my life alone and my dad is like I was so worried and everybody apparently was worried like my auntie was like I have not thought about that and like you know I had never been home alone while my mom was in the hospital um and I I, I wanted to mention it because you gotta imagine how alone I felt now that she was gone cousin gone no job, not to distract myself. I'm, that's why I just want you to know, like, I, for the first time, I, no matter how alone I thought I had felt before, I knew what alone was now. And I had to learn, I had to learn how to live alone. 
in the truest form. So, anyway, buried everybody that had to be buried. These people finally said something to me about this job. When I get back and they have orientation and stuff, I had to let them know, like, well, I just lost my mom. Like, I just want y'all to know, like, that's where my head at. <laughs> so, I'm going to do my job, but I just want you to know that's what's going on in my life. So, I'm back in Baton Rouge. Uh, I start the job. It is kind of rewarding. It's real sketchy. It's, 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 it's Baton Rouge, Louisiana. It's grimy. Like, these kids don't care. They're ruthless. The adults just trying to get their check. It, I think this job paid like 10 bucks an hour. It wasn't like, it wasn't financially rewarding but i had a job and i was i felt like i was doing good i was doing something good um and this is it's now 2019 it's now 2019 so Before I get into 2019, let me tell you some of the little things about 2018. Little things happened in 2018. I was hosting in New Orleans. Um, I met a guy named Fetty, and uh, he had me hosting. I was talking to this guy that we call FedEx. If y'all remember, I, if you follow me on social media and stuff, you know. I was talking to FedEx. That was nothing. Um... I, I think Nori turned like two. Well, she turned one while I was there. She turned one while I was there. Um, just so these are the little things. These are the little things that happened. I was I was hosting. Um, 2018, I started my comedy career. I started I got I started my comedy career. That is where this whole everything that you're gonna be seeing as me as a comedian started. It started from me telling Teddy Ray I wanted to be a comedian. He said, the only way to do it is to do it. So I started. Those are things I feel like I left out. So I just wanted to th throw them out real quick. Now, it's 2019. Let's talk about 2019. But it's 2019. We're here. Let's, let's talk about it. All right. I was working at the group home. And it it was a very interesting job. I'm living in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. It's rough. Uh, the kids were rough. I, they were ages like 11 to 17 or something like that. And honey, I can't tell you everything. I mean, I probably can, but I... I I just don't know how much that y'all want to hear, but it was a lot going on in there. Like it, it was, it was something out of a movie. Like it was something out of a movie. It was an interesting place to be. It was an interesting time. Um, the job paid ten dollars an hour. It wasn't it? Wasn't no high paying job. Uh, I, I'm at Sam's house. I've got a, a bedroom, a nice little bedroom. So I got a nice little bedroom. I got a little friend guy. We ain't doing that. Ain't no hanky panky, nothing like that. Uh, actually, at the time, up until, up until much later, I tell you about. I have I was celibate. I I celibate for two and a half years. So wasn't no no nasty, no dirty booty going on, nothing like that. But financially, I still didn't have nothing. Like I don't think I don't think I was saving any money. Um, I, I started doing Station Head, which was a, a app for you to be able to like, have a radio show on. And so, uh, I knew that was something that was important to me. Something that I love to do was radio. I met people on there, ended up making, making some like legit friends on there. Everything that I hung out with in real life. I even started talking to a guy and everything on there. Um, Sam moved to a new apartment. And I got, I was at the group home for maybe three months. I got fired from there. 
Um, so say I moved to a new apartment. I had I got fired from the job, and I just decided to come home. This was it, it's now April. It's now April of 2019. My dad been had been in um in our home by himself this whole time while I lived in Baton Rouge. Uh, so I left Baton Rouge. I packed up all my stuff. I didn't even tell my dad I was coming home. I packed up all my stuff and moved back to my parents' house without even saying a word really to anybody. I think I just left and went. You know, Sam knew obviously, but we was packing up the apartment, her apartment. And I was packing up my stuff the same day I got on the road uh, and came and came back home. Moved out of the apartment and got on the road and came back home. It was five hours. We went to my dad's house and I told him I, when I got there, I said, I came home to be with you. Because he had been talking about him being lonely. He'll say that he didn't say that, but he definitely told me that he was lonely. And so, I didn't have a job and all that and I just decided to cut my losses and, um, and, and go home. So, that's what I did. Didn't have a job while I was there. Again, it's, it's April. Uh, I'm just there. I'm just there with my dad in our house without my mom doing nothing. <sighs> nothing at all. My birthday is in May. My birthday rolls around. And um, actually, actually, let's go back. Right there in April, there was a probate and one of my friends became an AKA. And so I, that was the first thing I did, I think, was went to her probate. Hey, Takara. I was there for her, and after that, there was nothing. I don't recall anything happening for me. Um, no job, no, no, no nothing. Like I just don't. I don't remember anything happening right in there. And it might have. It might have, but it didn't stick. So my birthday's in May. Um, I didn't have any money. Sensei, God, let me tell you my sensei. Sensei, if you're watching this, I think about you every day. And I don't say nothing, but I know people who was there for me, people who did certain things for me throughout this whole time. And y'all trust and believe I'm taking names. I'm making the list. And the day I make it, when I when I make it, make it. I know, I know what's up. Don't don't know, don't ever be. Don't ever be worried about if you did something out of goodness of your heart and um, is you going to, you know, reap what you sow in in a positive way. You are. I and anybody forgot. Sensei, Ashley, a, a, a plethora of other people. I ain't forgot. Don't, don't worry. Don't worry. I ain't forgot. So, my birthday rolls around. Camilla's birthday is the day before mine. She, her birthday May 10th. My birthday May 11th. So, you know, she lives, she's living in Atlanta. She's doing great. Um, and since they paid for everything for me to come to Atlanta, my dad didn't, I didn't, my dad didn't give no money. Like, since they put the gas in my car and everything for me to come to, um, Atlanta for my birthday, I was turning 25. It was a great birthday. It was a great birthday. She, she took me to this really nice brunch and her family was so hospitable and loving and welcoming. Now keep in mind, my birthday is May the 11th. I think my birthday was on a Saturday. Mother's Day is the next day. So this is why this is important. Um, I didn't have to be in my house with my dad on Mother's Day. Sad. I went and I enjoyed my 25th birthday. When I got home... When I got back home, my dad had bought me, this is something that he would normally do. Um, he had got me balloons, my favorite things. He got me a happy birthday balloon and a happy, happy Mother's Day balloon. And I don't have kids, but, you know, for, for, for my mom, he got me a Mother's Day balloon. And that made me very, very happy. And uh, my sister had bought me, like, a cake. And she got me all kind of little stuff. And the love that I felt for Mother's Day... Because this was my first Mother's Day without my mama. And I took it like a G. I handled it. 
and everybody was really kind and loving and, and so many people thought about me and I really appreciate that uh, to this day I think about you know people that reached out to me and they co consistent they reach out to me every year for like most day now um and that that makes me very happy still didn't have no job y'all my dad come in my room and says to me now there was a conversation I'm, I'm, let me make sure I don't miss it there was a conversation with a former friend about me moving to Birmingham. And I was on the fence about it. I, plenty of people were on the fence about it. This was not... Because everybody ain't meant to live with other people. Everybody. Everybody shouldn't have roommates. And when I told Sam that this person asked me to live with, with them and come be here and get a fresh start and everything. Um, skept skepticism is, is the word. It was like, I don't know about this. Chloe was like, ah. But anyway, I'm I'm still on the fence about it. My dad comes in my room and says, he and he does, he does this whisper thing. This is how my dad talks. He does this whisper thing. Just in case, let me make sure y'all keeping up. It's May of 2019. I just turned 25 years old. Um, I don't have a job. My mom is gone. Um, my dad says, we got 30 days to move out. What? We got 30 days to move out of the house that we own? Or, or, or what? What are, you, what are you talking about? What are you saying? I was confused. My baby, I, I don't know how my daddy beat the system. I don't know what it was he did for all them years. But my daddy, and I don't care. He better tell it. I'm going to tell, tell it. Don't, don't lie. If he see this, I don't know. He paid them people for 20 some years. Just in there. How you just in these people's house? Like, we wasn't renting. Like, and he wasn't just he wasn't paying anything. He was just paying bills. I don't know how this went under the radar. I don't know. Um, I don't know. But apparently the, the house had been in like foreclosure or something. Like, I didn't know nothing, baby. I'm just living my best life. <laughs> just in our house. Just, I'm just in there. He told me we gotta move. Okay. So this this person, I I I told her, I was like, yeah, my dad said we got to move out of here. So, if you're serious about me moving to Birmingham or whatever, um, you know, how much you want for rent, woo, 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 woo. you know, I'm moving there with no job, no money saved. So, keep in mind, I was invited to Birmingham under these circumstances. Um, On June 25th, 2019, we pack up all our stuff. Our house is, is put in storage, the entire house, from 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 bedrooms to the front door. Everything is put in storage. And I get on the road and leave. I don't stay. I get on the road the next day is Father's Day. Because this is Saturday. The next day is Father's Day, if I, if I remember correctly. Um, I leave. I, go, I come to Birmingham. Now... Uh, I had been going back and forth between home and Birmingham and like going to Atlanta. I had been using that pipeline um, for events and stuff because I hosted an event in Atlanta for Station Head. Well, not for Station Head, but some of the people on Station Head had an event. And that was in uh, early June, like the 8th or something like that. And then boom, I turn around. 15th, I'm out. I'm moving to Birmingham. Okay. I have a room there i had to end up going back to louisiana to get my bed because my bed was in storage uh but it was at sam's apartment and let me turn it was in sam's apartment in Baton rouge so i go to get my bed and some of the things that i had at home like tables like my dresses and stuff like that i have them with me in in Birmingham now and it's great I don't have a job I'm looking every day I'm looking for a job and I'm just I want to tell y'all it's some stuff I want to tell y'all so maybe I'm just not gonna do it though but I don't have a job 
and somehow I'm getting, I'm borrowing money from my friends, and I'm going back and forth downtown. I'm like trying to host in clubs and stuff, and my DJ DJ KC like be paying me out of his pocket. Um, I'm still trying to find a job. Okay, I think in July, in July, I get a, a call about something I put in on in for on Indeed. Don't even remember what the job is at the time. I'm like, what is it? When did I apply for this? But anyway. Uh, I get a call to be an after school counselor. Okay. Uh, I go interview. They love me. I get the job. The job, now this is July. The job don't start till middle of August. This is early July too. Like this, It really might have been June. But the, the job don't start till mid-August when school starts back. Because it's for after school at a school. After school counselor. Okay. The job pay once a month, and it's part time. It's ten dollars an hour, three three hours a day, five days a week. You do the math. All right. So I'm paying what I can to be where I was invited to be at with the job that I got. Um, I started doing a lot of substitute teaching down at um in another part of the school. I started substitute teaching and the director of that particular area uh, basically plucked me. She said she needed somebody full time down there. And I mean, I had just moved here. I'm working a part time job, 10 hours an hour. This job paid more hourly and it was full time. Um, full time benefits, all that. So I'm like, um, can I have the job? I'm subbing down here. These kids like me. I'm good at this. I had experience at a group home and stuff, so that's that's how I got the job initially anyway. Uh, and I still work there. So, I, I get the job down there, and now I'm making more money full time. I'm, I'm doing well. I'm in a position now to save money. See, God will do some stuff now. You know, other people struggling, but I'm doing I'm doing better. I'm in a position to save. You, you can't tell somebody that you're going to help them get on their feet and then you try to tell them when they're on their feet. That ain't how it work. Like, you don't get to tell me that I'm on my feet. I tell you I'm on my feet. Yeah. Um. I, everything's as fine as it can be there. I, I'm doing comedy. Like, when I first moved to, when I first moved to Birmingham, I started doing comedy, like, the next week or something like that. Like, open mics and stuff and I mean I'm not like the world's funniest comedian not yet anyway um still went in a lot of stages it's open mic I was anxious I was still nervous and so I still am like still nervous just trying to find my way trying to get comfortable on stage and stuff so I'm, I'm basically I'm a teaching I'm a teacher I teach and I go and I do stand-up comedy I go and I do stand-up comedy and this is what I'm doing. That, that, that's all. That's all there is. I'm hosting in the club. I got a DJ, and I go host in the club for him on the weekends. And everything is everything is everything. Everything, nothing, nothing major. Well, I ain't gonna say nothing major happened. My nephew, my 14 year old at the time, 14 year old nephew passed away. Boom. People are just leaving this world. Um. My first cousin, he passed away. We have their funerals on the same day in two different cities. So I go down to Florida to be with, be with my my sister and stuff to lay my nephew to rest. And my family, the rest of my family, uh, is is laying my cousin to rest all at the same time. Um, so it was that was an emotional day. All right, just 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 so you know, I can't flee this situation again. I can't leave. I'm dealing with this. I'm dealing with this. And let's fast forward to when I think things are turning around. And this is not a video about like everything being all bad because it wasn't. It wasn't. I'm not saying it. I'm just telling you. I'm telling y'all more so where the coming back to YouTube. That's what I'm getting around to. I'm getting around to like everything that happened that made me be making this video right now. Obviously. So Camilla signs us up. 
and uh, for for to be on TV to do something for New Year's in New York, and I'm like, okay. Um, we have like a Skype call with somebody. Boom, we get cast. Like this is fast forward. It's it's because I went through my first my first Thanksgiving and Christmas. Well, my second Christmas at this point without my mama and stuff. Like the holidays were emotional. Nothing nothing to even talk about. Um, I'm working. I'm making money. Camilla says, um, we're going to New York. We're trying to figure out what we're going to do, how we're going to do this. We drive. <laughs> we drive. It's a paying gig, but we drive from, I drove to her in Atlanta. And then we, we drove from Atlanta to uh, Jersey City. Ashley got us uh, like a discount. <laughs> and uh, so then the room was really cheap. I, I went ahead and got all the information as far as like, the ferry and all that stuff and parking and little stuff like that. So we were kind of kind of good to go on that. Then it was a very inexpensive trip, but we went down there for New Year's. We got there on. We got there. We got to Jersey City. I think it might be after midnight on the thirtieth. Jersey on the thirtieth. So we stayed in the hotel. Got up. Went to Staten Island to park on New Year's Eve. And um, we took the ferry into Manhattan. They took care of us, did everything that we needed to do to be on TV. Then that night, New Year's Eve night, I was live on national television with Steve Harvey. I was standing beside Steve Harvey live on national TV in Times Square at the tail end of 2019, walking into 2020. That was the most amazing moment of my life. Regardless of the circumstances, however it happened, in spite of this, that, and the third, I was standing beside Steve Harvey live on national television in the middle of Times Square. It was a bittersweet because at some point I thought to myself, my mama not even going to see this. That was a lot. But still an incredible moment for me. I, I was happy. I was at peace. I was still. This was a turnaround trip. So we kept, we... We left that night. We stayed in the car. We stepped in the car. So after everything was over, we had to go do paperwork and all that stuff to get paid. You know how that go. <laughs> I felt like a celebrity. And um, we we got in the car. We, we took the took the subway back to the car. We got in the car. We slept in the car for a few hours because uh, it was like 18 hour parking. And so we we had plenty of time actually to, to get to get some rest in the car before we got back on the road. And we came right on back, drove back on down to Atlanta. <laughs> like, it was quick. It was, it was a turnaround trip, but I had been on TV. Me and my friend was on TV with Maria Menounos and Steve Harvey and on Fox. And it was cool. And I, I really appreciate the people I met. Uh, the casting directors were amazing. And it was a great experience. Oh, I think this is the last one. Should I do two? Should I do two? Okay. So, um, let's talk about 2020. Okay, 2020. Here we go. All right. I'm coming off the high. I'm coming into this year on TV. I'm feeling good about myself. I've got all these great plans. I've made an amazing vision board. Like, this is going to be an amazing year. I've got a church home that's doing well. Um, The Rock. Pastor Mike McClure Jr. is my pastor, and like he's like, he's doing great. Everything's great. Everything is great. My finances are great. My savings account is looking like something for once in my life. Um, everything's bliss. My my to do list and my bucket list of things that I'm gonna achieve in 2020 is extensive, honey. I'm I'm about to be out here. I'm going to my first NFL game. I'm going to see the Cowboys play. This this year is gonna be great. I'm going to work every day, kind of on time, not really late, pretty much. But I'm still I'm still teaching in my little class with my kids, my two year olds. I'm loving it, and 
nothing nothing profound happens from there i'm still you know trying to trying to do comedy or whatever february comes <laughs> february comes i meet a guy i actually had already met the guy but uh we started talking on valentine's day we started talking on valentine's day and uh he's great <laughs> He's great. Uh, his 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 name is my honey. He's my honey, and uh, he's great. And February is looking great. It's looking, you know. Think I'm not, I'm looking at my account. I'm looking at my money. I'm looking at my my circumstances. I'm looking at this man, like, oh. and then COVID. COVID hits starts there's there's chatter about what's happening in the in the world in February okay boom it's March the world gets shut down y'all are here I'm, I'm now I'm talking about something that I, I know you're here for you know this you're we're here we're here the world gets shut down keep in mind still trying to do comedy all this here's where things were good for me Here's where things got really good for me. I had been talking about I already wanting to come back to YouTube. I had been talking about that at the end of 2019. Like amongst my friends and with myself and just talking to God about it. We get shut down. My job closes. Keep in mind I'm teaching kids. And I babysit here and there. But I basically become a nanny. I'm still getting paid for my job. But I also get now I'm getting more money because I'm nannying for somebody at my school and that allows me to get ahead financially that's when I bought my camera I got my G um, my Canon G7X Mark II and I got my ring light that I'm using right now I got all of this at once okay so I'm like okay I'm gonna come back to YouTube what do I want to do so I'm thinking about what was the problem the first time and where I mentioned earlier realizing that I was embarrassed and depressed and all of that that's when these things come into perspective for me. Once I get the equipment and decide, okay, I'm serious. I'm going to come back. I'm like, wait. I felt like there was nothing for me to record before. Which is one of the reasons I left, you know, in my mind. I'm, am I happy right now? Am I in a position where I want to show what's going on in my life? You know, do I have my own place? No, I'm still driving the same Jeep they saw me driving before I left. I've had this car for six years. <laughs> it does great. I love my car. You know, but what what is so different that I want to share with the world to come back to YouTube in 2020? And this is um, this is a conversation I'm having with myself in about April. I think it's 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 April. It's definitely April. It's when I get all my equipment. Um. Well, that's like when I ordered it, and I end up getting it like, I think for like for my birthday or something. But I'm I'm having this battle with myself now. This internal conflict. I want to come back to YouTube, but why? What's different? What do I want to say? What do I want to portray? How? How is this time gonna be different? They say third time's the charm. So how is this time going to be different? And I had to sit with that. And I procrastinated and I thought about it and I prayed about it and I talked it out with my friends. Like so many, like Reed, Kaya, Devontae, and Ashley can get in the comments right now and tell you. They can tell you in the comments right now that I had no idea what I wanted to do. I just knew something had to be done. And I'm like, how do I, how do I be the YouTuber that I want to be? How do I t t tell the stories that I want to tell and put out everything that is important to me while also trying to cater to an audience? Like, how do I, almost how do I be the algorithm and still make myself happy? Like, I, I just, I didn't know. Um, so how do I, how do I basically niche down? How do I find my niche? 
I didn't, sorry, sorry, the lighting is crazy. Let me turn this way. Um, I didn't know. I didn't know what I wanted to do or how I wanted to do it. I figured it out and I started working on it. I started compiling footage and playing around with stuff. But of course, at the time, I'm still like, but I don't have my MacBook. That's it. I still don't have a MacBook. I still don't have a way to edit this stuff. That's the, the excuse that I was leaning on for all this time. Like, I don't have the equipment. That's why I'm not on YouTube. So I don't have the equipment. That was what I was telling other people. That was the what I convinced myself was what was in my way. So I'm nannying. I'm making money. I'm saving money. Uh, we go back to work in June. Um, my and, and what means? Let me tell you about May. May was pretty chill. Me and my honey, we're doing we're doing great. We celebrate my birthday together. Never experienced that. Loved it. Was happy. We're fine. Um, financially, I'm fine. In June, I go back to work. We go back like on campus. The world's still closed. COVID's still going, going ham in these streets, and we back at work, like we never left. I bet wearing masks and 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 lots of spraying down everything. Um, there's this conversation that happened a few months prior that I bring up about our job getting us devices like iPads and computers and stuff like that. So. If they tell me we have to wait about stuff like that, we just trying to see where what's going on at the job and you know, let's get let's get acclimated to life again. Alright. Now, everything's fine. It's months are going by. We're just I'm working, I'm dating, I'm I'm living life. Everything is grand. Like, am I happy with where I was living? Uh no, I really like there was a strain on the friendship that I had living together just it, it ruined our friendship Really bad like I said, I don't get too much into that, but so that was the only thing that was the only issue that I was really having uh, That's the only issue that I'm, I'm, I'm really having it's it's 2020 and I'm I'm blessed. I feel blessed my sales account again. Like I said looking good. I feel blessed in 2020 okay so yeah it's 2020 everything is is great no no major events other than i'm meeting a lot meeting celebrities because i'm doing i'm going to comedy shows and stuff and like I'm, I'm backstage and i'm feeling good i'm you know my my guy friends that are all comedians are like you know trying to help me out trying to get me comfortable and and you know working on material and all that little stuff so I'm out here. Here come, here come August. No. Yeah, here come August. I believe August or September, one of the two. Where I'm living, she's like basically she want an office, honey. I got to go because she need an office, so she can do what she doing. Um, she did all she gonna do for me. I got five somewhere to go. All right. Whatever. So I put my stuff in storage and I move out of there. And I moved to uh, my friend Coco house on the couch. So uh, here it is. Everything's great. I'm saving well. All this. Here it is. It's right now, today. It is November 2020. And I am sleeping on my friend's couch when I'm not at my honey's house. And my savings account looks good. I go to a dinner club every Friday night and I eat nice meals. And I am trying to find me somewhere to be long term. I've decided that I love Birmingham and I want to stay here. And my job is going great. I love my job. I love the kids. 
I love my co-workers. And I'm back on YouTube. I'm back on YouTube because if not you, then who? If not now, then when? I'm back on YouTube because how long are you going to let yourself make the, those excuses? At what point do you realize that you're in control of a situation? I'm back on YouTube because the underdog going to be on top. I, I, I know you sound like I'm talking in circles, but I'm, I'm back on YouTube because I've decided that I want to share all the things that I was running from. I don't want, oh, I don't have this, I don't have that. Like, now I have all the equipment. Um, and I think in um, October, I think it was October, the lady walked up to me and I burst out of crying because she had my MacBook in her hand. Uh, they, my my job ordered me a MacBook, and they take it out of my check, um, cause I'm an educator and they have a program for that. So that that conversation ended up coming back up, and so now I I own my MacBook, my Canon G7X Mark II, and my ring light, and I'm sleeping on my friend's couch, and I'm in the bathroom making this video because, in spite of my circumstances, I still have a story to tell. I am doing comedy, trying to do it more regularly now. I'm getting comfortable. I've decided to to come out of my shell with that. I've decided that I want to be vulnerable and I want to share my life as an entertainer. I want to I don't want to hide from my journey of going from nothing to something and just wait till I have something and be like, look what I did, look what I have. Nope, I want I, I want you to see it now. I'm in a, pl a place, I'm in a mindset now where this just is what it is. And I spent all this time and this money and, and prayed to have this equipment and I left YouTube because I didn't have it. And now I have it, so what's the excuse? What would be the excuse now? Is why I'm back on YouTube. I don't have a reason not to be. And I hope that this was inspirational. I hope that what you got out of this was no matter what you go through, no matter what you deal with, life is going to be life. All the roads end up in the same place. I'm still making this video right now. Still with no place of my own to live. Still fighting and trying to beat depression and anxiety and not let life win. So what? for what reason would I not just make the content? Turn on the camera, turn on the ring light, and do what you're gonna do. And I don't mean that just for you trying to start a YouTube channel or um, someone who's, who's thinking about coming back. For anything, if you're looking for a sign, let this be it. Life is going to be life. Don't allow your circumstances to be your excuse. If I hadn't started this 10 years ago, or if I had kept going while I was doing it, and I'm telling where I'd be now. So now I'm trying to catch up with myself. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get who I know I'm going to be and who I am now to get, get together and be buddies. So thank you for watching this video thank you for being in this moment with me i appreciate you i love you i'm praying for you somebody had to be praying for me for the last 26 years somebody definitely been praying for me for the last three years since since 2017 angel's been watching me and i want you to be on this journey with me to see the, where i go from here this very moment from, from the time you see this to the time I make it big and I'm in my penthouse and I got my driver and they fit me for dresses for, for award shows and all that. I want you to see it. I just, I just gotta, I gotta do it. So, yes, now I have the means to put out the content. I'm gonna do it. 
I, whatever the struggle is, I want you to see. Whatever the hardships are, we'll get through them together. All the great moments, all the blessings, all the love and the joy, every laugh, every smile, every hug and kiss. I want you to see as much of it as possible. I want to share it. You deserve to see it. I deserve to be liberated. I deserve to win in my own life. And that's what this is. So again, I say thank you. I hope that you enjoy watching every video that comes on this channel. I hope you click the link down in that description box and watch the old videos. And I hope that I've got a new friend after you see this video. So, I'm going to end the video by saying I finished my hair. <laughs> and now I'm going to make myself look a little bit presentable. And, uh... I guess I'll see you guys next time on Terry Heart TV.